Each week, American Artifacts takes viewers into archives, museums, and historic sites around the country. Next, Senate historian emeritus Don Ritchie looks back to the October 2001 anthrax attack that took place in the Hart Senate Office Building. The Hart Building itself became an issue of news in the year 2001. Uh, shortly, within a month after the events of September 11th, uh, a letter was sent to one of the senators in this building that contained a large amount of anthrax, a very deadly anthrax. About 10.30 this morning, my office uh, opened a suspicious package. We can't go into the details because this is an ongoing investigation. Just as soon as it became clear that there was a suspicious substance in the envelope, we contacted the Capitol Police and the Capitol Physician. I'll have more to say about uh, uh, our own circumstances in the office after uh, Dan Nichols of the Capitol Police and Dr. John Eishold, our Capitol Physician, uh, speak to the questions uh, directly as to the letter itself. Dan Nichols. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. I'm a Lieutenant Dan Nichols. I'm spokesman with the United States Capitol Police. As the uh, Senator said this morning, approximately 10.30, a letter was received in his office in the Hart Senate Office Building, which contained a, a powdery substance. There was an exposure uh, when the letter was opened. Following protocols, the staff who opened the letter immediately contacted the U.S. Capitol Police. We also contacted the attending physician's office of the Capitol. The officers who responded to the scene isolated the situation and as according to our protocols, we conducted field tests. The first field test came back as positive for anthrax. In order to confirm that, we did a second field test, and that field test also came back as positive for anthrax. They hoped that it could be contained in a small area, but after a day or so, they began to be concerned that the anthrax could not be contained. And so all of the Senate staff who work in this building were required to come to this room uh, to have themselves swabbed to test to see whether or not there was any chance they may be tested positive for the anthrax. Uh, and uh, within three days, everybody was assured that they were not. No one in this building became ill because of the anthrax, although two postal workers died as a result of that incident. But that, because of that incident, security increased uh, enormously around the Capitol. Now, the, the building was actually shut down for three months, very abruptly. Officers just had to leave, and half of the U.S. senators operate out of this building. They all had to find someplace else to go. A lot of them uh, were sort of roomed with their other colleagues from their state. Republicans and Democrats alike shared offices. Committees moved in to get staff moved in together with each other. The Senate Historical Office went over to the Senate Library, where nine people sat around one desk with one computer and one phone, and we operated that way for three months. And afterwards, we did a series of oral history interviews with people to find out what the experience had been like. And what we discovered was there was an enormous amount of camaraderie that came about because everybody was operating out of these really confined areas, uh, in a sense, crowded into rooms. People brought in cakes and cookies during the day, and uh, there were lots of parties, office parties. And in fact, Afterwards, people felt a little nostalgic about going back to their offices and, and losing that sense of community that had existed. Uh, sometimes crises bring out the best in people. But this was the largest building that was ever decontaminated. And uh, a large squad of federal workers, uh, both from the military and from the medical facilities, came through here to decide how to clean this building. And uh, after three months, we were able to finally move back into it. So, it's been open for a couple of minutes now. For a couple huh? of minutes. We have yeah. to bring the shower. Good. You can watch this or other American Artifacts programs at any time by visiting our website, cspan.org slash history.